Thank you for joining us. I'm Jonathan Michael, and welcome to episode four of The Sacred Project. Today, I'm at St. Margaret of Scotland Parish, located at 222 Ridley Avenue in Toronto, a stone's throw away from the 401 off of Avenue Road. St. Margaret's just celebrated its 70th year, and I've had the distinct pleasure of being cantor at this church for 23 of those years. Today, I will be speaking with the resident deacon, Rob Kinghorn. Rob will be talking to us about his family background and his church on the street. Come join us now. So I've known you for 23 years uh, from the time I've started singing at St. Margaret of Scotland Parish. So I'm elated to have you as my guest today um, on today's episode. Before we start talking about the amazing work that you've done uh, with individuals on the margins of society, perhaps you could first uh, just give us a bit of insight into your family background because it definitely takes a very special individual to do the type of work that you're doing. 
Well, thank you, Jonathan. Thank you for inviting me today. I grew up in Glasgow in Scotland, and uh, there was my mother, my father, and my brother and myself. So, uh, so it was a sort of normal middle class <laughs> upbringing in many ways. And uh, my father was a musician. He came from the BBC Scottish Symphony Orchestra. Uh, but that doesn't pay all that much in Scotland anyway. And so he always supplemented that. He had other pupils he always had. He taught in the Royal Conservatory, both uh, playing viola, violin, and uh, and the theory of music as well. Right. So this was his, music was a big part of uh, in the family life there. And he, he also had the parish choir to run. They were fairly well known in neighbourhoods for having such a, a good choir. I think it says a little bit about my upbringing and uh, what my father's attitude was as well, that has maybe influenced me a lot. I remember when, at that time, Harry Belafonte was top of the hit parade with Mary's boy child. And so, on Christmas Eve, he, he said to the pastor, so I can sing Mary's boy child at Mass. The pastor always had a heart attack. <laughs> he says, no way, no way, I can't do that. So, uh, so it was influenced me, I think, in a way, I, I realised that sometimes you have to push the boundaries uh, of things and, and step out to take a risk as well. So, But that was the, the main part of my father's life. My mother was a nurse before she was married, and once uh, she got married, uh, she just stayed at home to look after my brother and myself. All right. So what role did the uh, Catholic Church play in your family life when you were growing up? And... Um, how has that influenced your understanding of faith and community? You know, in Glasgow where I grew up, the church in many ways for us was the centre of your social life, right. not just your, your prayerful life. It was the centre of that. And I remember uh, on Sunday nights in particular, that was I looked forward to that. We used to have benediction in the church. Right. And I didn't really look forward to the benediction, I'll be quite honest. <laughs> what I looked forward to was all my friends would get together. We'd go to a friend's house and we'd have a Cayley, uh, which is a big dance party in Scotland. Yeah. So we'd put on Scottish music. And there in a room, which it couldn't be more than 10 foot, 10 foot, we'd be dancing around there. So it was a social thing. Church was a social thing as well. And just going for church and then going back home. I also played in the soccer team at, at the, the church. So on Saturday afternoons, that would be where I'd have my, my recreation, if you like, that, uh, right. there. So, yeah. so the church really was a centre for social life. Mm -hmm. and uh, where we met our friends. I think that's what community is about, isn't it? That you, where you go and you meet your friends at church and celebrate with them. Right. What position did you play in soccer? I played in goal. Oh. It's here they put the uh, daft people in goal. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think in hockey as well in soccer, to be honest. There you go, there you go. So obviously faith, um, the church, community played a large part in your upbringing. Uh, when did you realize, though, that you're calling to eventually become a deacon? That was a, a long journey in many ways. And uh, I have to start back in Scotland. Uh, yeah. I say I graduated from university with a physics degree and uh, I'd started a computer uh, company. This is when computers you know, took up a whole room, so right. we'd punch cards. So that was a, uh, I was well in my way to be established working and. But then I went through a period of about a year and a half when my life just fell apart. Mm -hmm. All my hopes in many ways of what I, I could see my life becoming uh, weren't being realised in some ways. And uh, I fell into a depression for uh, at least for a year, year and a half, or getting uh, help from a doctor to get through that depression. Mm -hmm. And one thing I didn't give up on was the church. I remember every Saturday night I'd walk to a church, which was a, about a mile away. And uh, I'd sit in the church and I'd pray that I could just go over this and things would change. I remember many evenings going to bed praying that I wouldn't waken up in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then waking up in the morning and say, see God, you don't answer my prayers. <laughs> <laughs> but then something strange happened. I still can't remember the moment that this happened. Uh, or if it was a moment, but it certainly was uh, uh, not a long, drawn-out thing. But the idea came to me I should go to Canada. 
Now, this is a, a strange thing because I'm a homebody. I'm not right. the type to travel. And this idea that I should go to Canada, I didn't know anyone in Canada, didn't have a job in Canada. Right. And I, I said to my, my parents and to my best friend, I feel God wants me to go to Canada. And that's all I could say. I, mean, I didn't hear a voice or anything, but it was a feeling I had. Right. So I started uh, preparing to come to Canada. And I, I came here and uh, I got a job uh, up at uh, York University in the computer department. But uh, I went to the local parish uh, where I lived, and they were uh, a great community. And one of the things we were doing, they were going to a prison up north of the city. So I started in that group, going up uh, every Tuesday night we'd meet. About an hour and a half we drove up north, met with the people in the prison, and then came back about midnight we'd arrive back. And at that time, I, that's where I met my wife, my uh, future wife, Rhea. And we, we, she was going up and down to the prison as well with. And then people say, why don't you become a deacon? And I said, I have no interest in becoming a deacon. Zero interest in it. I see them up in the altar, they give the homily, and that's really not what I really want to be doing. Um, so then uh, I was invited down to St. Augustine's Seminary uh, with Rhea right. to talk about the work we were doing here at the Sunnybrook Hospital. Mm -hmm. And there's a group of deacons there. And so we talked about what work we did, and we sat down after a talk. And I still remember sitting in that front row, and another deacon got up. And he said, oh, here's what I do. I give the homily at the church. And during the homily, I'll say to people, well, I'm involved in the hospital ministry. Would you like to join me? If you do, meet me at the back of the church, right. and I'll train you. And at that moment, something again stirred within me. That had stirred within me about two years before. And I said, that's what I want to do. Oh, when you came to the seashore Seeking the wise or the wealthy, but only asking that I might follow. O oh Lord, in my eyes you were gazing, kindly smiling, my name you were saying. Treasured, I have left on the sand land. Close to you, I will find other seas. Lord, you knew what my boat carried. Neither money nor weapons for fighting. That's for fishing, my daily labor. O oh Lord, in my eyes you were gazing, kindly smiling, my name you were saying. All thy treasure I have left on the sand there. Close to you, I will find other seas. Lord, have you need of my labor? Hands for servants, a heart made for loving, my arms for lifting. The poor and broken. O oh Lord, in my eyes you were gazing, kindly smiling, my name you were saying. All I treasure, 
I have left on the sand there, close to you. I will find other seas. Oh, tell me where you would have me to a village or heart of the city. I will remember that you are with me. on the sand there, close to you, I will find other seas. So obviously we know you're very passionate about your ministry on the street. Um, so for those watching, let us know, how did you come about starting this? I was downtown one evening. Uh, we had a meeting in our house with, of a small group of deacons, and the uh, meeting didn't finish till about midnight or something like that. And mm -hmm. so he asked if he could get a drive downtown. So I, I took him right downtown to the heart of uh, Toronto, where, where we live, right to the heart of the city. And part of that would, would drive us through what we'd call uh, the bad area of the city. Right. And, uh, and this is a beautiful summer's evening. I still remember it, a lovely summer's evening. It was one o'clock in the morning. And we're driving along there. And you know, when you're looking out, you can see drug deals going on in one mm -hmm. corner. You can see prostitution happening in the street to the other side. Mm -hmm. And I still remember saying to myself, where is the church? Where's the church? Right. And if I got out my car at that point, I could physically touch probably five churches within five minutes. Right. They're all over the place. But where is the church, the people of the church, at one o'clock in the morning on the streets of our city? Right. And that was, it was that thought that said, well, I'm the one in thinking of it. Maybe I should be that one. And so that was the first idea of going on the streets of our city to the areas which are, where there's drugs, there's prostitution, and uh, walking around that area. And uh, so I have to say, uh, deacons can't just say, oh, I'm going to do this ministry. We're assigned ministries by the Cardinal or the Archbishop okay. of the Diocese. And so what I had to do after that thought came to me, I had to go to the very highest authority to ask permission. So I went to my wife, Rhea, <laughs> <laughs> and said, you know, is it okay if I do this? And so this is where I'm blessed by her experience in prison ministry, right. hospital ministry. She's used to you know, this type of environment herself, in fact. Mm -hmm. so, and so she gave me permission for that. So I asked permission to start. Uh, if I go down there once uh, a week, same night, same times, walk the same streets right. in what is considered the, the bad area of a city, and just walk, that's all, just walk around. With the uh, dressed as I'm dressed just now, right. and nod to people, say hello, and then listen. It's a ministry of, of listening, really. So that's how it started. From then, it's been 17 years now, and I keep walking every Thursday, wow. same area, and it's important consistency because the people in the street don't have consistency in their lives. They can't trust anyone. Right. So I think for me, it's important I show up. I keep showing up at the same time every week. Just in case, not that there's a line-up waiting for me, no, but you'll start bumping into the same people. So that's where it all came about, Jonathan. It was yeah. a, a strange uh, a beginning, but it's turned out to be a, a blessing to me mm -hmm. and a blessing that Rhea shares that ministry in terms of sometimes we bring people up to her house and have a meal together, and she is welcoming you know, into the house as well. All right. 17 years, that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Can you recall uh, some memorable experiences um, from your work with individuals on the street? Yeah, yeah. It, 
One of the things that absolutely amazes me in the street is the, the faith that people have. Where it's faith in uh, angels or the spirit. It's a great faith there. It always surprises you when you see it. And this was a fairly, probably within the first year of going downtown, I met this lady as she was on uh, one of the streets and she was a prostitute in the street and uh, waiting for cars to pass by. And I was walking by her and I said hello and, and she said, wait a minute, sit down beside me, would you? And there was a wall there that she was sitting on. Mm -hmm. So I sat up in the wall and she said, listen to this. And this lady recited a psalm, Psalm 13. Now I can't recite two lines of any psalm, <laughs> apart from the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want that. Yeah. She recited this by heart. And this psalm was talking about, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you let the people have their way with me? And it goes on and on. And she was reciting it. And then she got to the end of it. It's called a psalm of desolation. And they're all the same. At the end of them, they always say, but I will trust in your loving Lord, loving, uh, O Lord. I will always trust in your loving. Mm -hmm. And I said, where did you learn that? She said, I was in prison, the chaplain taught it to me. Mm. And it, it's all that kept me going when I was in prison. So I always say that psalm to myself. Right. So it, it showed me this deep faith that people have. And a, a few weeks later, I mean, I, I saw her again, you don't always see the same people every week, but a few weeks later, she was further up the street and I was walking by again, said hello, and she says, oh, I've got one more thing to ask you. <laughs> and she said, remember Jesus was on the cross? He was hanging on the cross with two thieves. I said, yeah, I remember that. She recited that whole part of scripture from right. memory again. And then she got to the part that she said, and remember when he turned to the good thief and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. I said, yeah, I remember that. She said, do you think he'll ever say that to me? Huh. And, I, and I said, I'll be honest. And I, was, I knew her life story by this point. I said, if God doesn't say that to you, he'll never say it to me. I believe that. Right. And she said, no, I don't agree. I think some people are just born to be prostitutes and drug addicts, and I'm one of them. You see the despair that we have mm -hmm. in the street very often. They need someone to encourage them. Well, you know the good news. Uh, it's been several years after that. I've seen her on the street on drugs. I've seen her out in the street. She's clean. She's now clean for many years. Oh, correct. She's got a young son, and she's a great help. Often she comes to speak with me at events. She's an amazing lady of strength, and she's very strong in the 12-step program as well. Right. What does this do for her faith? What a beautiful witness to the, the, the people in the street and their deep, deep faith out there. Thank you for joining us for today's episode. And thank you to Rob Kinghorn for being our guest. Rob writes monthly articles for the Catholic Register. And for those who are interested in learning or reading more about his stories, feel free to purchase Rob's book, The Church on the Street, which can be purchased from the website dailytvmass.com backslash resource. Thank you for joining us today. channel of your peace, where there is hatred, let me bring your love, where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. and where there's doubt, your faith in Our channel of your peace. With this despair in life, let me bring hope. 
Thank you for being part of the Sacred Project journey. Your support means the world. To help contribute to the creation of more episodes, please visit our website at thesacredproject.ca. You can also explore and obtain music from the series by visiting thesacredproject.ca. If you'd like to experience these beautiful hymns live in concert, come join us on these special dates. For more details and ticket information, visit thesacredproject.ca. Let's continue the musical journey together. See you at the concerts. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That's it. 